Hey everyone, it's the Fox of Specs, and today we're going to be going through Season 3 of our Ruby Volume Reviews. So, as I've mentioned in the previous episodes, um, Volume 1 is an introductory season, Volume 2 is a development season, and I like to think Season 3 is a bit of a climactic season, to where the tone has completely changed in the second half of the series. So, let's get into it. Okay, so we open with the Vital Festival, where the schools of each of the uh, uh, countries of Remnant f um, take part, and each team within each of the schools uh, ranks up and fights. Uh, this is kindly and well um, commentated by Ublik and uh, Professor Port, that's it. And uh, yeah, well, no, there's not much commentary from them, but it's good. <laughs> It's a, it's a, they, those two contrast quite nicely because Ublik's hyperactive and fast and Port is very, he's very gentleman-like and he's like, Now this is what I love to see, a good old-fashioned brawl. And Ublik's like, well yes, as statistically this has teams that it has winning and this team has better winning. Character impersonations, I love it. And uh, yeah, we open with uh, Team Ruby fighting another team. Just generally, yet again, the fight scenes are well shot and it's nice to, it, it's nice to see a lot of teamwork integrated within. As well as like this, while these new teams don't have a lot of coverage, they do, some of them individually have really cool weapons, like Reyes, I believe, is one of the characters. She has a hoverboard which turns into guns. The creativity of Mondi Oatnam and his weapons. I love it. And uh, yeah, first episode is just kind of a nice uh, starting point, really. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention at the very start of this episode, Ruby's um, kind of talking to her mother a bit, like, it's, I, I forgot to mention this again, but she's obviously been out of this world for a while. That's kind of an obvious thing of what that means. But it's kind of nice to see that Ruby isn't always just hyperactive. Like, last season with Penny, she was very understanding, and I think this opening was very charming, to say the least. But yeah, the rest of the episode progresses on to just, um... I guess really just interact, just what we've seen previously, just nice calm development. So, the next episode develops quite nicely where Team Juniper has a fight with another team and that has a very comical ending. But also, uh, an even more comical one with Team Sun, which is uh, Sun Wukong's team and his mates, Neptune, uh, Sage, and Scarlet. David, Scarlet David, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that fight was a bit ridiculous, but at the same time, good. But one of the best starting episodes from the first half of season three was when we get introduced to Crow Bromwyn. This guy is Ruby's uncle, and he's very, very mysterious. Well, he's weird. He's an alcohol. He's one of those alcoholic characters which ends up being one of the most badass characters. And he ends up fighting Weiss's sister, Winter, who is the... Sec well, not second in command, but it has a very high ranking amongst General Ironwood. That fight scene is very well good because Crow is mentioned quite a bit due through both volumes. Uh, one where Ruby says, that's my uncle, and then in Yang's story where he saves her. Uh, so we had like a lot of mystery, mystery built up around him in the early seasons, but uh, to see him in action, oh god, it's good. Um, there's a lot more build up to the whole, as yeah, I mentioned um, in season two that Glen, uh, Glenda, uh, Osbin, and Ironwood have this kind of uh, circle going on between them, and Crow's part of that circle to where they've been finding out, they've been trying to locate who these uh, villains are, aka Cinder's team, and Crow's has high suspicions that they're already in Beacon which they are, and that whoever, and that they're responsible for something called the Fall Maiden. Well, not the Fall Maiden, for putting someone who is a maiden in the condition, and that Crow is, again, it's a Crow size of Osbin saying that Ironwood needs to step his, um, step his troops down because... The, the question is, if this is the size of the army that we've brought, what are we expecting to fight? And at the moment, they don't know what they're expecting to fight. The only evidence they have is an, of the intruder that was Cinder in um, Season 2. 
Um, yeah, like I said, it's kind of a, just a small progression of seeing how the teams fight in the tournament. Like, we learned that Mercury and Emerald are very, very, like, very dangerous in a fight with uh, another team. And it's not until season six where the, not season six, episode six is to where the season completely flips its head. It's because Mercury ends up fighting Yang and Emerald's um, ability that she has, um, semblance, that's it, allows her to manipulate um, imagery, essentially. So it's like, it's an illusion based. And um, she creates the illusion that Yang punched Yeah, she, sorry. She creates the illusion that Yang broke Mercury's leg, and then that kind of shifts the balance of uh, the season because it really gets it gets dark and emotional at this point. Um, specifically through Pira a lot. Yeah, mainly Pira through the second half because she then gets told that she is a chosen candidate for this maiden thing. These maidens are... They represent a season, so you got spring, summer, fall, winter, and she's been chosen in line to be the next one after. And then, like, it's so, it's so weird because it's, it's like one of those like the teachers are have all this underground knowledge that no one's ever gonna see or find out about. And then when Pyrrha sees the condition of the last maiden done by Cinder, Mercury, and Emerald, it's like, seriously, I have, and it's like it's it's so. It leads on to one of the most emotional moments of the franchise, to be honest, at this point, because she tries to talk to Jean about it. Well, kind of, like, about destiny and everything, and he's like, if you, if you, if there's something in your, if there's something that you believe that you should do, don't let anyone stop you. And then she just breaks down. It's very, it's very... It's very weird seeing this transition of character uh, because while it's very good and it's powerful and impacting, it's at the same time very disturbing because she ends up throwing him against a wall with a magnetism and it's like, whoa, you do not But considering, like, that her destiny, like, what Osborn said to be her destiny is basically become nearly a god, it's kind of scary. But even then, that's not even the worst. That's not even the most shocking turn for season three. Season it happens in the next episode, where like because the whole point of um, Cinder and her villainous squad infiltrating Beacon is to create moral panic, because with moral panic comes the grim. So what they do is they manipulate the uh, tourney, the tournament um, uh, ladder, so that Penny versus Pira. And given Penny's a cyborg, yeah, that doesn't go well with magnetism, and it ends up in a her unfortunate death, which then, obviously, then because I just because I mentioned that Ironwood and Atlas have done this, this creates moral panic, and people start to have disbelief in Atlas, especially after this, and when everyone's in shock about a person dying and being revealed as a robot, it just lets loose for a bunch, a bunch of grim. And again, it, from there, it just escalates. Like, we learn that the White Fang, the White Fang starts invading, and their leader, Adam Torres, who is a, defo- a former associate of Blake, starts causing havoc. And again, that leads to such a dark and... It leads to such a dark and impactful moment where... She's, they fight kind of briefly, and she says, I didn't want this violence, I wanted equality, but Adam's like, you can't have this equality, especially with what's going on. And then, well, as, as well as the previous maiden dying, this then results in Yang losing a temper, and then, well, losing her arm to Adam, and then that... I forgot, as well as, it's just so, they make it so impactful, and it's just so, so hard to, it was so hard to watch the first time I watched it, and I was just like, wow, this season has taken such a good turn, but at the same time, I'm just watching it like, god almighty. Um, 
and from there it's just like like Ruby was like Ruby through all that time that those events happened she was trying to stop the um, attack ship from destroying Beacon and then the moment she finds out what happened to her sister she's concerned but then she goes to help Pira who separated for the fight Cinder after Cinder took the last of the four maidens powers and then presumably defeated Osbin and then that then lead that fight again choreographed well but then that leads to Pira's death and then oh my god I'd say that was the worst death of that seat. I'd say that was the worst death, to be honest, because it was just so... There were so many things that, like, you knew this was going to happen. Like, you didn't know it was going to happen, but once it started revealing more and more, it was like, oh, no, this is going to happen, isn't it? And I was like, no, why don't do this? But with all that said, it made season three really good. And the ending of season three was just so, it was just so impactful because there's several days and weeks after the attack on Beacon, Ruby's found out that she has an unheard of power that, well, it's been heard of, but it's not been seen in years. And she then wanders off to go stop and help the other uh, academies with uh, the rest of Team Juniper, henceforth now they're in as Ranger, and everyone is just in a, everyone is just in a state of disbelief. Like Crow, like I haven't really talked about Crow that much, but he's obviously kind of anticipated a lot because of what he does. He's been out in the field a lot, and like he now is kind of just watching over Ruby just to make sure that she's all right. Um, and after the kind of torment with, and after the thing with Blake, she then leaves Yang again. Well, I say again, it's like with the whole discussion thing in season two, and Yang's in complete disbelief, and she just doesn't have the oomph and power and the confidence that she used to have. I mean, she's missing an arm as well. And then Weiss, I really, yeah, I haven't really touched on Weiss this much, um... I guess there's a lot more discussion into about why she's very distant from her father. Like, Winter did the same thing. She was distant from the her father as well, because just the way he is. And obviously, at the end of this, she ends up going back to Atlas, because after the beacon attack, I, I, he believes that Atlas is safe. And, um, yeah, we get a really nice kind of cliffhanger speech and ending to the main villain i guess who's been behind everything which is salem who looks like a witch that <laughs> that controls the grim essentially uh, yeah i guess it's time to round off what season three is <laughs> season three is a bit of a, an emotional roller coaster it starts off as the previous two seasons have i mean we've got great colorful and bizarre fights in the season like I forgot to mention one but I won't say it because it's just amazing just and we get a, we get a slow build up to how the villains work but it's the second half after episode 6 it's from 7 to 12 7 to 12 is where it, it just changed it just became more emotional and just more it was just so good to develop characters and it's my favorite season for all that reason. It's just because it, the twist came at the right time. Everything came into place for the plot, like what the villains were doing and how the heroes um, were affected. And it just, it just changed the game so much. And it really segues in nicely to season four as well. But um, I will obviously <laughs> talk about that later. And yeah, that's my opinions of season three. It's, um, it's, a, it's where the emotions start going skyrocketing through the roof and it's it's just um, it's just very good to watch but yeah that's my opinion on season three and uh let's see if i can get season four out before next saturday this is fox respects signing out